Good afternoon, Liberty family. It's uh, Saturday, May 23rd, 2020, and it's time for my weekly segment called Finances, Affirmation, and Prayers. Um, my name is Reverend Catherine. I'm the Associate Pastor of Liberty Community Church, where our pastors are the Reverend Doctors Ralph and Alika Galloway. We meet here every week at 3 p.m. Central Standard Time, and if you wanna make sure to keep up with the segment, please uh, follow us on the Liberty Community Church PCUSA Facebook page. There you can get alerts when we're getting ready to come on and you can uh, go back and watch prior segments and you can also enjoy our other ministry um, information that we provide. And if you feel this information is beneficial, please, please, please share it with your family and your friends. Okay, so today we are going to talk a little bit more about your, our credit score and how it's impacted. But if you don't mind, today I'm going to keep it a little light. It's a holiday weekend. I know people are out and they're celebrating. So it'll be more anecdotal as opposed to a lot of the hard-hitting uh, information that you would get. So I hope that's okay. Um, so today, first though, I want to go ahead and shout out uh, five of my cousins who are graduating from high school uh, today, okay? So four of which who are in Atlanta, and um, if it were not for the COVID crisis, I would be there right now. So yes, I am a little salty because it, I was planning for two years to attend those Atlanta graduations. So first, I wanna shout out my cousin, Kennedy Jackson Okelbor, who's graduating from McBride High School in Long Beach, California and she'll be attending Long Beach City College in the fall. Yay, Kennedy! Then I wanna shout out my cousin Joshua Goodrich Bell, who's graduating from Atlanta Christian School in Norcross, Georgia, and he will be attending Mercer University in the fall. Yay, Josh! My twin cousins, Ezekiel and Zachary Hawkins, better known as Zeke and Zach, are graduating from Grayson High School in Loganville, Georgia, and will be joining their sister Zaria up at Howard University in the fall. Yay, Zeke and Zach. Hi, my Isha, I see you. Thank you for joining. And then finally, my niece Imani Langford is graduating from Alatoona High School in Ackworth, Georgia, and she'll be attending Valdosta State University in the fall. Yay, Imani. So from your cousin and your auntie Nisi, I just want to say congratulations. So yes, my name is Catherine, but for those of you who've known me for any amount of time, you know that my nickname is Nisi. And I also want to say congratulations to all graduates who are graduating in 2020. If you're graduating, graduating from preschool, grade school, high school, college, technical school, or any type of advanced degree, congratulations. And for those of you who attend Liberty Community Church, we'll be celebrating you on May 31st, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and get into our lesson for today. But first, we'll talk um, about our scripture. It can be found in Proverbs 22, 26 through 27, and it reads, Do not be one who shakes hands in a pledge or puts up security for debts. If you lack the means to pay, your very bed will be snatched from under you. Now, hi, uh, Cheryl, I see you. So that verse, again, these last few weeks, the verses have been very uh, kind of straightforward and blunt, right? But both of these verses are talking about us living within our means. And so verse 26 literally is saying, if you can avoid it, don't put up your house or things of value for debts because your living situation can be in jeopardy. Okay, so that's one literal translation of it. But I also see this verse saying, don't give up your very security for debts. Meaning, don't make credit or debt decisions that will impact your financial or your retirement security. Okay, and then verse 27 says, if you lack the means to pay, your very bed will be snatched from you. Well, again, a literal, a literal translation means the repo man is coming to take your stuff if you don't pay your bills, okay? But another way to look at this, um, or another way to translate it can be, um, when you can't pay your bills, your bed, or your rest, or your peace of mind will be snatched away. And you don't want that, right? 
So we'll talk more about that when we talk more about credit today, but I want to, uh, I want to offer this to you. I would like for you to give yourself the gift of living within your means. Does that mean that you can't have nice things? No. If you can afford them and you've worked for them, by all means, buy what you can afford. But if you can't afford it, you must ask yourself, who are you competing against? And is it worth risking your peace of mind? Okay? So, last week we talked about what impacts our credit. And we talked about uh, our credit score. And so most of you, you may know that a credit score uh, ranges anywhere from 300 and 850. And the higher your credit score, um, the better it is for you when you're trying to get loans and things of that nature. So remember, we talked about last week, 35% of your score is based on you making your payments on time, okay? So even if you are uh, strapped and um, you, you know, want to pay your bills and you have the money to pay your bills, make sure you pay them on time because that affects 35% of your credit score. That's how they make that determination, okay? Now, I don't know if you remember in last segments, um, but we've talked about all of us have a financial education, whether we know it or not. For most of us, it came from our parents, maybe from our friends and from our acquaintances. And these financial nuggets that we've learned over the years can be positive or negative. So today, I'm gonna to tell you about a financial nugget that my mom taught me that I don't even know if she, was, uh, she realized it was a financial nugget. So my mom, over, the, uh, over her lifetime, she never really made a whole bunch of money. I don't think she ever made more than maybe $30,000 a year. But what she did do was live within her means. And she taught me and my siblings that we should pay our bills on time. Now, she taught me this not from a financial aspect, but more from a sense of having peace. She said, you never want the stress of bill collectors and people harassing you, so just pay your bills on time, okay? That was her philosophy. Now, when I was 19 and I was in college and I did not have much money, I, I remember I had gotten uh, been late on a phone bill and the bill collector called me and the bill collector who called me was brutal, okay? And I remember just being so upset at the nastiness of the collector and how they were trying to collect the money from me. And then, it re and then I remembered what my mom had always said, just pay your bills on time, you don't want that stress. Then, so I told my roommate, my college roommate about what was going on, and she and her husband at the time began to tell me, well, you know, it is important to pay your bills on time because that's how you can have good credit. Now, they explained it to me a little bit. My mom never explained it to me in the terms of having good credit. She just said, pay your bills on time. But my friend and, my, and, my, and her husband, I don't know if they were trying to make a purchase. I don't know what was going on but they began to tell me that having uh, that it was a good thing to have good credit. So um, I put what my friend and her husband told me um, together with what my mom told me about uh, wanting to have peace of mind. So moving forward, I made sure I paid all of my bills on time. And so by the time I was 26, because I had had small jobs, not, you know, not making a whole lot of money, but I was making sure I was paying my bills on time. So when I turned 26, I purchased my first car off the lot with my own credit. And I was so excited about that. And so the person who sold the car to me at the time um, was um, my pastor's brother um, way back then. And so he asked me, hey, Sarita, I see you. Um, so he asked me, well, what do you think your credit is like? And I remember telling him, well, I think it's okay, but I really didn't even have a concept of that time of like, how a credit score worked and all of that. I just knew that I was paying my bills on time. So I said, I think, you know, I think it'll be okay. Well, when he came back, he, um, from running my credit, he shook my hand and he said, congratulations, you have excellent credit. And so um, from, that, um, from that experience, I learned a couple of things. And so I wanna share them with you. One of them is, 
and I think I shared this in a prior segment, I don't ever purchase cars brand new anymore. I think I gave you guys that tip before. I purchase previously owned cars most of the time because they're cheaper and they're still really good cars. Thank you, Sarita, I see it, thank you. Um, and so uh, I said they're really good cars and I learned that also in that whole thing that it's important to protect your credit. Because you see, my mom said that she would help me with the down payment on the car and she did, she gave me $1,000 for the down payment but she also said, you will have to qualify for that car on your own. I am not co-signing, okay? So yes, she loved me, I was her daughter, but she said, you're gonna have to get it on your own with your own credit. And I did, I was able to do it. And I remember that payment to this day. It was $288.92. I bought a red Dodge Stratus, it was a stick shift. I don't know if they make those anymore that, um, that are maybe not in a truck. It was a stick shift, but I love that car. <laughs> I love, love, love that car. I was able to qualify for it on my own and I drove it until the wheels fell off. Hey, Kevin, I see you. And so um, I know this is kind of anecdotal information from my own personal experience today, but I think it's positive practical information to share about paying your bills on time. So now some of you might be saying, well, you probably have always had good credit. Not true. Remember I told you in the past that I had had a bankruptcy and I was so ashamed about that because I was in the financial services, services industry and I felt like I should have known better. I've also made some other mistakes as it relates to my credit and it relates to housing big mistakes that messed up my credit. And I'll share those details with you at another time. But I'm saying all this to say that I've not always made the best choices. But what did Maya Angelou say? When you know better, you do better. And so that's what I've tried to do. After making bad choices, I made the decision that I would make better choices on the next time. And so that's what I try to do. I try to make better financial decisions and I've discovered along the way that I love learning and talking about finances. You see, because I truly am a teacher at heart because when I learn something, I like to share, share the information with other people. And so I'm sharing it with you each week, okay? So remember, one way to make sure you make your payments on time is to automate them. You can set up bill pay or automatic transfers to your creditors. Now, I like to initiate my own payments and send the money to them. I do not like the idea of them coming into my account and taking my money. So that's just one of my little quirks. Um, you can do it how you want, but if you automate it, you can make sure that you're not missing any payments, okay? And so this is what my challenge is for you, is if you are trying to increase your credit score, over the next six months, be intentional about making your payments on time and you will see an increase in your credit score. Okay, that's our financial piece. I told you guys I'm gonna start making that piece about 10 minutes or less. So then we're gonna, is it 13 minutes? Okay, well, I was close. <laughs> 13 minutes or less. Um, so I'm gonna go, let's gonna, we're gonna go ahead and I don't like auto either, okay? <laughs> uh, we're gonna go ahead and get into our affirmations, okay? So we have nine affirmations, um, and this is our ninth week doing this. I still can't even believe it. So let's go over our affirmations. Again, I hope you're getting this in your spirit. I hope this is something that you're um, saying to yourself in the morning. But first, this is my time to get water, so hold on. All right, and it's our time to breathe. Hey, Nancy Jordan, I see you. <clears throat> it's our time to breathe and say our affirmations. So let's breathe in. Let it out. Breathe in again. Let it out. All right, first affirmation, scripture. My God shall supply all of my needs. My God shall supply all of my needs. 
second scripture or second affirmation. God, you have unlimited resources and because I belong to you, I have access to all of those resources. God, you have unlimited resources and because I belong to you, I have access to all of those resources. With every breath I take, resources flow to and through me i'm laughing <laughs> because my daughter is sitting next to me doing like all the hand movements and saying it with me but that's good because she's 12 now and i want this to be in her spirit so that she walks her life out with these um, affirmations in her spirit so again with every breath i take resources flow to and through me Next one, God, I'm grateful for all that you've provided and I have room for more. God, I truly am grateful for all that you have provided and I have room for more. I am intentional and consistent about saving money. I am intentional and consistent about saving money the next one fun i save and it makes me feel good <laughs> i do save and it does make me feel good all right the next of uh, the newest three <clears throat> and we say this one remember with a little bit of sass i am a saver and I will reach my savings goals. I am a saver and I will reach my saving goals. The next one, I pay off debt so that I can be financially and spiritually free. I pay off debt so that I can be financially and spiritually free. And the last one, I honor my ancestors by passing on multi-generational wealth. Because you know that's what they want for you. They want better for you. They want you to do better. And so I honor them. I honor my ancestors by passing on multi-generational wealth. Well, that's nine affirmations. It's been nine weeks that means we get new affirmations next week yay i'm so excited um so before we close um next week we're going to talk a little bit more about your credit and credit utilization or um how your credit balances affect your score um and then i want you all to stay tuned for uh tomorrow 9 30 for sunday school with elder diane then 11 a.m worship service with uh, pastor ralph preaching a new word uh, monday tuesday thursday friday mindfulness with elder sarita and wednesday night bible study at 6 30 with pastor alika so if there's no further ado let's go ahead and get into our prayer and then we'll get to go i told you we we're going to keep it light this week um got through it a little quicker i know it's a holiday weekend Lots of celebrations going on, but I am committed to doing this every Saturday at 3 p.m. And you know what? I did want to say we may start doing it where I record it, uh, record it ahead of time and just post it. Um, I would like to get your feedback on that, but I do like being able to have an experience with you when I see you come on. So we'll make a decision on that. I'm just trying to, I guess, make the content and the experience uh, bigger and better. So let's go ahead and go to God in prayer. God, I thank you and I praise you, Lord God, for your loving kindness is better than life. Your loving kindness, Lord God, is better than life. And God, I thank you that you continue to bless us, watch out for us, and keep us, Lord. I thank you, Lord God, that you've given us the freedom, Lord God, freedom of thought, freedom of expression, but I thank you, Lord God, that you're in the business of helping us to be happy, healthy, and whole, Lord God. To walk in liberty and freedom and proclaim, Lord God, the good news that you are here and you are our Savior. 
So God, I thank you for everyone under the sound of my voice. I thank you, Lord God, that they will give themselves the gift of living within their means. Lord God, being, begin to, that they will begin to check around if it's something or if they have a, a desire that they have to have this and they have to buy this and they have to buy that because this person or that person has it. God, help us to begin to examine why we do what we do financially. And Lord, if there's any area, Lord God, where we need help, Lord God, help us. Help us, Lord God, in those areas. Our relationships, Lord God, to money, our relationships to our finances, Lord God, have a root. And if we, Lord God, have ideas and things that we no longer, that no longer serve us, Lord God, help us to release them. Help us to give ourselves permission to release them, Lord God, and be okay. I thank you and I praise you, Lord God, for all who are under the sound of my voice. I thank you, Lord God, that as many states are reopening, that will be safe. Lord God, that will not take for granted, Lord God, wearing our protective, um, our protective mask and washing our hands and all of those things that go along, Lord God, with being safe right now. But Lord, I thank you and I praise you, Lord God, that you will send a shower of blessings over each and every one of us. And help us to continue to know, Lord God, that you are with us. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Hi, Reverend Corey. I see you. So again, please join us for our other ministry offerings. And if you have any topics or questions that you would like to discuss, please put them in the comments and I will make sure to discuss them. And I will continue to pray for you. Please also pray for me. Have a wonderful weekend. See you next week.